1972 Summer Olympic Games are the finest the world has known. World records in every sport. To merely reach a final, an athlete had to be brilliant. Hi, I'm Freddie Tyler, winner of a gold medal in the 1972 Munich Olympics. So we got Fred Tyler here. Good morning. Uh, appreciate you coming in. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad to do it. I'm excited. We've talked about your uh, goggles uh, in time. It's nice to see them, that you've actually got a pair. and. They look like they're awesome. Yeah, well, I appreciate that, and I appreciate you coming in. I wanted the folks that are going to listen to this to uh, learn a little bit about you. So, um, how'd you get your start in swimming? Well, I have three older sisters and an older brother. My three older sisters still swim. They are master swimmers, and the youngest of the three, uh, Celeste Miller, is a world and, and national champion in her age group. She's in the 68-year-olds now, but they all continue to swim. Um, we started swimming, I guess my family started swimming, and I was the youngest of five, and I tagged along and really was not a very good swimmer. I couldn't even get a top six ribbon back when I was eight, nine, ten years old. Uh, about twelve years old, I started to get pretty good, I, and so uh, up to that point I had played baseball and played tennis and those kinds of things, and as I got better in swimming, my mother um, she could tell that I, I had some potential and, and ended up contacting a coach down in South Florida in Boca Raton, Terry Carlisle, and uh, ultimately I went to train with him. And uh, I started training with him in 1968. Um, as a 14-year-old, I swam in the Olympic trials for Mexico City and uh, was 20th at age 14. I think oh, I was wow. the youngest competitor at the Olympic trials that year. And uh, we determined at that point, maybe in four more years as people retire and I get faster, that I might have a chance to make it to Munich in 1972. And um, ultimately that's exactly what happened. So, you know, sometimes you, you think I'm, you know, I think, oh, you, you were okay in high school, you did good in college, went and tried out for the Olympics. But this was a, this was a four year, five-year plan? Well, I guess at the time that I had been, uh, by the time I made the Olympics at age 18, I'd been swimming for 14 years. Like I said, I wasn't very good as an age group swimmer, um, but I started swimming at four, and the reason that I was swimming at four or five years old really was because my older siblings were swimming, and um, my mom wanted to know where I was, so when the events were up for six and unders or eight and unders, she'd know where I was because I'd show up for the blocks. <laughs> Life was back different back in those yeah. days. Yeah. So you just didn't go to the Munich Olympics. Something special happened while you were at the Munich Olympics. Uh, we got to see the gold medal, man. Well, <laughs> probably the, of course, the highlight for me is that I was able to win a gold medal as part of the 800 freestyle relay and uh, the people that swam with me were John Kinsella, uh, Steve Genter and of course Mark Spitz who won seven gold medals in the Munich Olympics and uh, that's one of the things that's most noteworthy of the Munich Olympics is that Mark Spitz won seven and until recently when Michael Phelps beat him by winning eight. Some other things that are happening on more on a, a tragic level is this was the place where the first worldwide act of terrorism took place when the uh, people came in and, and took the Israeli uh, athletes hostage and they were killed and it was just a terrible time put a halt on the Olympics and uh, I can tell you story after story Dave of things that happened in that Olympics that were unique including guys that missed their event so I mean if you think about training for the Olympics all that time and then you get there and then you miss getting to your event. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah, you train for all that time and sleep in late yeah. or something. Yeah, there, there are a lot of things happening. The basketball team, the uh, United States basketball team was kind of, um, I guess for me, I'd say they got cheated. Um, and they, uh, the other one was a fellow, Rick DeMont, who was an outstanding swimmer, won the 400 meter freestyle and then they said, uh, his, they did drug tests after the you swam, 
and uh, said that he had had a banned substance in that had come up in his test. And uh, he was an asthmatic, and so he was taking asthma medicine, and the American doctor's medical crew had not picked up on that, and so he was his gold medal was taken away and oh, wasn't no. allowed to swim the 1500 meter free, which he most assuredly would have won. Wow. So he lost out on two gold medals then, right? He did. And I don't think that that, it was not fair in, in my opinion. I don't, I don't think that they dealt with that the way they should have been. Yeah. So uh, what's one of your memorable, most memorable swim meets that you had? Obviously the gold medal one. Right. I, you know, it's the Olympic stands on its own, but from the standpoint of um, just a race that I guess I was lucky uh, is the 2000, um, I'm sorry, 1974, uh, actually 1975, I'm sorry, the National Collegiate Championships, NCAAs, at Cleveland State, and I won the 200 individual medley by one ten thousandth of a second, and it is considered the closest race in swimming history. Well, one ten thousandth of a second. Uh, of a second. Yeah, it, it is. To me, that's immeasurable. Am I glad that I mine had number one next to it? Yeah, but I, they don't do that anymore. They they will establish ties, and I think they go out to the hundreds. So yeah, yeah. I think I remember Michael Phelps won by like a one hundredth of a second. Yeah, uh, but yeah, one ten thousandth of a second. It's really immeasurable. Yeah, I'm just glad that I was the one that had the one <laughs> next to my name. So you have a collegiate championship. As well, I do. On top of you, I, your I was a member. Indiana was the national champions in 1973. We were uh, runners up the other years that I was at Indiana, and uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to win a, a collegiate championship individually as well. well. Nice. Well, you had an incredible career. By the time I met you, uh, you were a teacher, and I didn't know um, that you had won a gold medal. You're 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 very humble about the fact that you uh, won a gold medal. Um, uh, I think we were taught, the way I found out, we were talking about something and um, and you had mentioned Munich 72 and I knew you were a coach swimming and I, I think it just came up that like, oh, were you in the Olympics? And you said, yeah, and I'm like, oh, I was just kidding, really? You were in the Olympics? <laughs> and, and then we, I found out you won a gold medal, so it was pretty neat. Um, you know, part of the reason, besides getting this uh, story out, which is pretty cool, is later on I had developed my my goggles, which I call poogles, and uh, and I had talked to you about them to just get your your opinion on them, and and uh, early on you're like, hey Dave, that's a really good idea, you know, hope it works out for you. Well, we actually have them now, and I just wanted to get your opinion on on these goggles what you like about them, if there's anything that you dislike about them, or, or uh, what's your opinion on them? Well, as a, as a professional gold medal? I, I can tell you as a person that's been around swimming pools my whole life. Now, competition is one thing, and recreation is something different. Um, but these goggles, I think, have an application in both areas. Um, obviously, uh, I have a grandchildren, a grandson, he loves to go swimming. One of the biggest problems that you have you know, for children is uh, the chlorine burning their eyes because people in pools and uh, just the chemicals are out of balance and so on and so forth. Um, and so these goggles, as I tried them on the first time, I could tell they created a very good seal around my eyes, which is just the most important thing. So from a recreational standpoint, a uh, user, that, that would be excellent. As a competitor, um, again, in, in practice, because you're taking your goggles off and on all the time for a variety of reasons, that would be um, a, a big benefit as well because they, they seal very quickly. You don't really have to mess with them, change them, and that kind of thing, which is, is a little bit of a problem. Um, again, going back to recreational, uh, from the standpoint of them my grandchildren will let their goggles go off and they'll kind of float around and float to the bottom of the pool and now we're going, you know, well, what happened to your goggles? And I don't, Grandpa, I don't know. 
you know, what happened to them. And so these, obviously, you're going to be able to see and be able to retrieve. While from a, a competitor standpoint, what you have is that same benefit, uh, although you're probably not taking your goggles off and on that much during a, a training session, but the fact is that you have some resistance on this so that when you're training, you you have something that is creating drag. Well, there are a lot of things that we as coaches do to create drag and, and then when you get to the time when you're racing, you get something that's very streamlined. So I look at the applications for the Poogles to be um, several areas and I like the design, I like the looks. They, they look like they are a, a wonderful product and I'm just, I'd like to have a pair because oh. I'm still swimming. You can have as many as you want. All right. <laughs> and one more time to say in 1972. Hi. Wait. <laughs>